explain uh, what happened with Pixel this morning. So we've had this problem that we've been chasing since we started testing for this two weeks ago, where we had seen a problem where, under some conditions, the fuel valve would would respond sluggishly. Either it wouldn't move for a little while and then start moving, or it would move at a slower than normal rate. We had only seen this on the ignition process, and we, we had it a half dozen times during our testing, and we tried to track it down. We did not get to the bottom of it. We swapped some actuators, and we thought it was okay. We did a bunch of test flights without it happening, but we actually had it happen again on our last flight yesterday on the ignition. We had one shutdown where it didn't start right, and it just barely started on the one that we actually got the flight off to win the level one prize. But looking back at the data, it was the same problem, commanding it to move, but it just didn't start moving there. Uh, with Pixel, we had done three successful flights after we had changed an actuator without seeing any sign of it, and we thought the problem was gone. Uh, it's, it's never good to have a problem just vanish and not really know what you did, but mm -hmm. we thought it was good enough to fly. So we got out here. When we started it up, it ignited properly. It came up to the 45% idle level, but when we commanded it to throttle up to full throttle to lift off, the LOX valve responded normally, went up to full throttle, but the fuel valve moved at about half speed. So that meant that uh, the engine went up and it was running with a third more liquid oxygen than it was supposed to have and a third less film cooling or fuel of any kind there. So it was both hotter and less shielded there, and it burned through part of the nozzle. And that was something that we had considered as a possible uh, concern on there. So we had added some extra insulation on the bottoms of the tanks there. So if a jet of fire comes out on there, we didn't want it punching into the tank on there. So, But just as it was lifting off, the nozzle burns through down there in the lean mixture, shoves the gimbals over, and that kind of catapulted the vehicle over onto its side. We, uh, it's actually not hurt very much. It bent one pipe a little bit, and we considered seriously if we wanted to make a flight in the third window today. But... The bottom line was we've been looking at this problem for the last two weeks, and we know we need to get to the bottom of this. I'm, we could roll the dice and make another flight with this here, but there's a couple possible failure modes. If it doesn't move the throttle when we're trying to descend on there, it could slam into the ground harder than we want. Uh, it could go higher than we want. There's a number of things that could happen, and we think that it's probably better for us to just stop and not fly anything again until we have absolutely found this problem. It's a really annoying one, and it doesn't happen when you just run through the test. And for a while, we only got it to happen when we were actually firing the engine, but we finally found out that we could sometimes replicate it if we just pressurized the tanks with nitrogen, so it's something with a certain amount of drag on the actuators there. But uh, unfortunately, we tested it again a couple times, thought it was gone, and it came back. So what's the plan going forward to track down and resolve this problem? Well, when we get back, we're going to try and set up a bench test since it happened more seriously on Pixel this time at the higher pressure than the tests that we had done on the other ones. So we're going to try and set up a bench test at much higher pressure on the valve actuators, put it up to like 800 or 900 psi. And if we can get something that happens repeatedly every time when it does that, we will positively be able to solve it. But if it's something that only happens once, you know, if it happens 50% of the times, we can get lucky and have three perfect tests in a row and think we've got it, and then it might happen again on the next one. So making it more reproducible is the first step to resolving the problem. And at that point, then, we, we had the guys up the last week. Uh, Russ and Phil and Neil were sitting on the crossbars up there with the oscilloscope up there checking all of our drive circuits. And we found a couple things that we probably want to improve in a next-generation design board, but we didn't find a smoking gun for anything there. But we're going to have to go through it again and find anything that we didn't check on there, get our reproducible case. And as soon as we absolutely identify it, we'll be able to make part changes and whatever and really fix it for sure. Now, how are you going to balance the work on that with the, the work with the Rocket Racing League engines and also your new suborbital project? At this point, this grounds everything. Is the rocket racers use the same electronics board for this. Uh, all the suborbital stuff was also going to use this electronics board. So nothing is going to fly again until we have a definitive solution on this. But I really don't expect it to take long. I mean, if we sit down and we dedicate an entire day to this, I expect that we'll be able to you know, find it and fix it. And then that will just be done. So is this a little bit of a letdown after winning uh, level one yesterday? No, it's not too bad. It, I would have been really bummed if we didn't wind up doing anything out here, but we got the level one out there, and uh, as a lot of people saw, I had a handful of concerns going into it, because we did get shortchanged on the amount of testing we wanted to be able to do, mm -hmm. and in the testing, we, we did a heck of a lot of tests in 10 days on there, but still, I had a half dozen things that we were concerned about that could cause problems, and this was one of them. It was the most mysterious one, so I can't say that I'm... 
I'm devastated and shocked that this came up and bit us. And I'm happy that we were able to, and since we found out in retrospect that we were rolling the dice even on the mod flights on there, I'm happy that we got one of them off successfully. And so today turned out to just be another day of testing for us. It just happened to be at the cup on here where we would have eventually bumped into this similar thing in our know, regular testing. We did get a couple of good data points for it. It's the first time it happened going from 50% up to 100%. So we can rule out a couple things regarding limit switch electronics and the valve actuators. Uh, and we had a few more data points in the current traces. So we actually got some productive stuff done here. Uh, the flight data point was useful. It's a shame we crunched our electronics box a little bit on there, but you know, it's not the end of the world. We have extras. Well, it's got to be, what, a sense of relief accomplishment that after coming so close last year at winning level one, you were able to do it this year. Yeah. I mean, it, I would have been fairly despondent if we had come out here and not been able to get anything done. I mean, I would have been railing about the, the testing limits that had been put on us and all this other stuff, or if we had been tripped up by the flight windows. There were things that, that I could have been griping about in various ways, but... I, you know, there's still a lot of things that this stuff isn't going to be routine until we're doing hundreds and hundreds of flights. And the fact that we've done, you know, we, we did like maybe 12 or 15 flights in the last couple of weeks on there, and we were able to, to at least put up three successful rocket flights here and then one other aboard on there, that's about all you could really expect statistically, you know, until you actually start running dozens and dozens of no changes, didn't touch a wrench on it, the thing just works over and over again. That's when you could start expecting things to work right on cue. This is all still R&D. You know, all of the vehicles like this are still things where you learn something on every flight, you find something that you want to, to add to your procedures or add to the, so the software that controls it or change out a part for something different. Mm -hmm. And we're still clearly in that learning process. And we're not going to climb out of that until we've got the vehicles that are sitting there, not touched, just clocking up flights. And you know, we started to get to that point on the Rocket Racer where didn't touch anything, did a whole bunch of flights in a row. But we have already on that like a list of stuff that we want to improve before we wind up making the next version on there. And there's certainly a balance where you can get stuck in that, keep wanting to continuously improve things, but at some point you need to just say, run with it and start building up the experience base. Yeah. So looking ahead for the next year besides going after uh, level two again, what else do you plan to accomplish? Uh, well, our top priority, figure out this driver issue. The next priority is uh, get the methane, the LOX methane engine working. That's caused us a lot more trouble than we thought it would. And honestly, we, we had backburnered a little bit. The rocket racing stuff had taken a bit of our priority, and we had kind of bitten off a few more responsibilities than we could really chew at, at one point during the last year. But we're probably going to be taking more people on full-time now. Uh, the methane work is important for us long-term as we start looking towards upper stage stuff. But it's also, you know, what we're working with on NASA right now. The, uh, we're waiting for the next couple of airframes to come in from the Rocket Racing League. Uh, we are expecting to build five more airframes in the next year for them. And then starting to churn out a whole bunch of engines for the suborbital project. First to do four modules bolted together to prove out the differential throttling. Then we break those apart and start flying the modules fast, finally. I mean, the modules now, we've got the level one accomplished with them. Their main point in life was to be able to start doing higher altitude testing on there. So during the next, probably won't be before the end of the year, but early next year we'll at least be flying those guys a mile high or so in Oklahoma. And then eventually when they finally get all their spaceport stuff cleared out here, we'll be taking them out here and flying them as high as they'll go.